G'day folks and welcome back to the channel for part 18 of my Beginner's Primal Strike Elementalist playthrough. Uh, last episode we went and speed ran Elite Act 1. Um, as someone said in the comments on that video, I did indeed uh, forget to pop the chest with the Wooden Krieg there, so I missed out on a Tainted Brain Matter, but uh, bends the brakes. Uh, mistakes were made, but uh, we will move on. Uh, today we are heading into the Dark Vale Gate. And before we get there, we have to do the mill, the village, and then into the gate. Um, I forget if I did Fort Heron here. I think I did. I'm pretty sure I did. Hang on, what do we got here? Barnabas, Karoz, clear out the mill. Let's, uh, let's go see our good friends, the Kaiman's Chosen, for which I need to go to the other rift, and just see what quests they have available for me. I think it's going to be the uh, the ashes because I think I um I think I did these quests last time. It's been a couple of days since I've recorded anything on this character, and um, yeah, you forget things after a bit. Or maybe that's just me. Anyhow, let's uh, let's go have a look here. You have a quest, okay? Uh, what do I do? I will recover the ashes. Yeah, so it is the ashes in the. Um, Tomb of the Archon. That's fine. So yeah, we go to the Blood Grove, and from there we're gonna head through Graver's Mill, Village of Darkvale, Darkvale Gate, blah blah blah, up the coast, or through the mountains, I guess. Not really up the coast. Uh, right. What do these buttons do again? <laughs> it's been a while. All right, let's get some whirly boys on the go, and uh, we'll go clear out the mill first. So. Everything on the way should be relatively easy. I am actually going to duck into the area behind the waterfall here. Just so as I can see it on the map. Uh, makes it easier to... Well, I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, if you know where the totems spawn, then you will know before you run down here if it's going to be here or not. Um, the fact that I can't see it on the map tells me pretty easily that the totem is not here. Uh, but now I'll be able to see it from further away. And since this is one of the better farming locations for a sort of 90 to 100 level character, I do want to get this area cleared out. Um, there's also this little bit right down here at the bottom. Anytime you see a statue with two shields, there will be a totally normal shield, which is actually a mace in the area. Um, may as well pick it up. It's worth a little bit to sell. I have no intention of using it though. So there's one of these here, there's one in the Steps of Torment, there's one uh, pretty much inside Devil's Crossing, actually. The uh, the bridge you blow up to the south uh, southwest. Uh, you go across a bridge and you can uh, get another one there. Um, there's one in the Ancient Grove. There's another one in... Wait, I already said that one. I don't know, there's six of them anyway. So if you're interested in these, there's there's one for pretty much all of the classes really um, and they're all maces that look like shields so you can run around with two shields if you so desire anyway we're playing two-handed so I don't so desire <laughs> also something to note here this spectral miasma uh, I'm gonna unpause this in a second and check out my uh, resistances so vitality and chaos are both below the cap and that goes off whenever you kill one of these um, Harbingers or blood letters or whatever they're called. Is it the Harbingers? Yeah, I think it's the Harbingers. But whenever you kill one of those, uh, you'll have your resistances shredded. So I'm actually going to use a Chaos and a Vitality Potion when I go to fight Karoz. Um, what do we got here? No. No dice, but I'm going to keep looking for um, shoulders and especially gloves. I think my gloves are my lowest armor. Uh, nope, the helmet, but we just replaced that. Plus one to all skills is really hard to replace, so I will probably end up using that until I get the level 94 one. Um, right, so we've got a couple of points to spend here. I'm happy with 10 out of 12 on Blast Shield. Uh, more is better, technically, but I don't think I care. Um, the other thing we could do is Storm Surge here. Actually, I probably should have done this a while ago. 
Um, this is flat lightning damage, and then, yeah, it's a lot of electrocute damage as well. Uh, but the flat lightning damage is what we're after, and that gets added to the main attack. So I should have done that a long time ago, actually, just looking at it. Uh, there is potentially a totem right here. Um, and actually, I will have to kind of cut back over here, because I want to explore the area and sort of uncover all of the totems. So I am going to do that. And then just over here, looks like my totem, which could be here, is in fact going to be inside the village, which I'm okay with, that's fine. Um, and then my other one is actually going to be... Actually, you know what? I'm going to go get it. I do need to get a little bit of XP, so why not? Um, let's just kill off this hound caller fellow, and then we'll head back and get the uh, get the totem. So uh, from here, I normally want to head up this way. There's a totem potentially over there, but I can't see this one. Um, let's just go uncover it. Why not? We're pretty close. So just here on this little sticky outy knobby bit, um, potential totem. It's either here, or it's behind here, or it's at Sorrow's Bastion. So because it's not in those first two places I mentioned, it's going to be here. So I've never seen this one not spawn. I think in theory it can happen, um, because I've had other totems that were part of three groups, or part of you know, three potential spawn locations. I have had them occasionally not show up, so... I think it's possibly, potentially, maybe possible, uh, but I have never seen this particular totem not be in the game somewhere, either here or at those other two places. So, I'm going to do this one. Um, no arcane, which is good. Let's throw down our healing totem. Just for a little bit of extra, why not? And everybody's dead. Once again, resistance is shredded because of that... Uh, that fellow there that I killed. Worm scale for guards. Uh, these are actually pretty good. Um, these are... Uh, oh, they're the level 50. Never mind. If they were a higher level version, I would be very tempted to use those. Um, there are fire and lightning themed boots with a similar shield to this one. Um, obviously, this is a much lower level, though. So that's fine. Also, in between episodes, I did a little bit of vendor shopping here. I've grabbed two Kaiman's badges here for the Chaos Resistance and the other resistance that these particular ones have. So I picked those up from the secret shop in Blood Grove, which is... Hang on. I must have done that in normal. But uh, I definitely went shopping and bought them. So uh, that's the first totem from the Blood Grove. There's two in this area, uh, technically three. Uh, so there's one, there's one that's either here, or behind here, or way back down here. There's another one that's actually in the Blood Grove area, so you can see this one just here. This one I generally don't farm unless it's here. Um, since it's there, I'll I'll go back and get this one. Ooh, we get the bad spawn. There's a rock in the way. That's alright, we can go around. never bad to kill more cultists. They might have um, seals of binding, which are always welcome. There we go. Alright, let's pop it like it's hot. Uh, I'm going to try and kill that guy last, but he's probably just going to die by accident. Yeah, he's, he's already dead. I'm going to start taking a lot of damage um, because of the resistance shredding on these guys. So, I have got my finger hovering nervously over the healing button. Okay, Volcanum is not very great for this build, I don't think. It's more of a fire thing. And I may have to go back to town to sell all this junk. Um, actually, speaking of, this stuff is junk. It's literally just vendor fodder. Um, however, what have I got for bits? 1.8. I probably want around 3 or 4 million before I stop picking up junk. Um, so this one is here, and then there's another one along this little edge here somewhere. And then the third one's kind of over here. I don't generally do this particular set of totems. 
um, because if it's not this one, you have to run a decent distance to get to it, so I don't usually bother. Is that arcane barrier? That skill's not ready. All right, so yeah, usually I, I come here, I check if this one's there. If it is, I run down and clear it, and then I come back, and I check this one. And if it's this one, because I've already checked down here, then I don't do that one. And then uh, you can check over here. You've got this spot next to the mill. Or, um, or is it just here, I think, is the other one. Next to... Yeah, this next to this building. And if it's not in those two places, then the third spawn for it is the one we're going to get here. Which is in the village. So I'm decently happy that it's in the village. Um, this one seems to spawn more. I, I don't know that that's true. But it seems like it is. I have better luck with this one, at least. That's probably just um, some sort of bias speaking there, but I have got a lot of the gear that I've been looking for from this one. So I definitely like this one better, even though it may not actually be better. Alright, uh, the village of Darkvale is always good to farm. So you get one guaranteed dynamite in here, and you also get one guaranteed treasure trove in here. Which means, even if you don't have any dynamite, you will always be able to open the treasure trove in here. And the first place you go, when you come in, is just over here. This is where the dynamite is. And the first place to check for the treasure trove, it's not here, um, but it can spawn just between these two cabinets. So you check there. Then we run over this way. I'm going to clear this area out because there is the, the totem you can see on the map there. Um, and I don't want to have a million of these little cultists throwing red balls at me the whole time while I'm trying to kill the totem. So I'm just going to clear this area. Also, there's some inside this house almost always. It's also a lore note here if you haven't already got it in normal. The second place to check for a treasure trove is this little hut here. Uh, it kind of is a little bit obscured by the uh, the wall here from some angles, so you may need to come up the top here, but you'll be able to mouse over it to see it, no problem. It's just, uh, yep, area is clear, well, except for this guy. Okay, here we go. This should be relatively quick, I think. Um, I don't think I'm going to get a second spawn here, so everything should just die nicely. And the last blood letter. Done. Alright, what do we get? The Mark of Calamitous Desires. Do I already have this? Is that what this one is? Yeah, it is. We've got a duplicate. Oops, wrong one. There we go. Got two of them now. This one, I think, is better. Anyway, um, let's grab all this rubbish and go and vendor all this at some point. Okay, so treasure trove in there. There's another spot to check for a treasure trove just up here in these houses. Which is, yep, just here, so I've got mine. Two blues from this one, that's not bad. And then there's a little semi-hidden stash of goodies under the bridge here. This one. This game does not handle multiple levels well at all. <laughs> so then across the bridge here there's one more location to check for the treasure trove. Um, in these bathhouses there's lore notes as well so make sure you grab those. Uh, this building here, I think it's on this side but it might be on this side, one of these two spots is the final location for the treasure trove. So if you're after loot, make sure you pick that up. Alright, speaking of loot, let's see if Zarya has a new necklace for us. What have we got? Seers of Mending. Let's see. So you should just accidentally kill her crystals with this build. Um, impervious of the Cabal. That is actually a lot of resistances. Um, how's my vitality res actually? 6%. I can't use this yet. 
Well, I could. I could go and swap these corpse dusts for um, uh, soul shards. But I think I will hang on to that. And there's no reason really not to do this. It's extra loot, it's extra XP. Dawnbreakers, not bad. Um, this is mildly terrifying. <laughs> Depending on the spawn, those things can be really dangerous. I've had a couple of times now where they've come out with, um, uh, what are they called? Obsidian, obsidian axes, obsidian battle axe. I forget the exact name, but they've had those with some kind of scary mods on them. Okay, just going to bounce back to Homestead and vendor all this rubbish. And then we'll get into Dark Vale Gate. There's not going to be a lot of messing with gear today. Uh, pretty much covered all that last episode, so... Don't have to worry too much about that. What were those boots, actually? Rubbish. Well, not rubbish, but not something I'm going to use. Um, these are not horrible. They're not amazing, but they're not horrible. And these are actually kind of tempting to use. That's a that's a lot, a lot, actually, of resistances, and Battle Fury is always good. I think it can go, though. Dawnbreakers, level 68. No thank you. Um, this is really tempting. The Cabal is not so useful, but the Impervious is really nice. I may have to um, maybe kill Zarya a couple times in between episodes. I figure I've got the other character for full-on show all the farming type playthrough if anyone's interested in that. This one I might try and uh, keep that to a minimum. At least for repetitive farms. Okay, what do we got? Another heart, some blood of Chathon. Um, should probably do this at some point. Not now, but, you know, some point. Right, into Darkvale Gate. Um, I should have checked while I was in town for some Vitality and Chaos Resistance potions. Because I do want them for Karoz. Um, he does... have to check to confirm this, but I'm pretty sure he still shreds resistances. And I'd rather not die at this point. I've already had one... I mean, I want to call it a close call, because I'm still here. But um, if I hadn't exited to the menu, this character would in fact be dead. Because there was literally nothing else I could do at that point, And I had, you know, 20% health left. So this character is basically dead, but we're going to continue it. Okay, Senthel the Voidbringer. Is no more. Um, let's actually uh, let's go back here. Um, do I want to? Hmm. Yeah, why not? Why not? There's some loot here, and it's kind of fun loot. Let's just uh, spin the camera around a little bit, and we'll blow this down. And then inside here, hidden spoils. And I was not rewarded for going back. So, ah, oh, well, such is life. So we'll keep killing our way through here. There is a guaranteed dynamite in Dark Vale Gate. Often, though, I don't end up getting it because it'll be behind a blocked wall and it's kind of not really worth running around the, uh, the blockage to get to it. But we'll see if it's available this time. Um, did I get you in normal? I think I did. So I've been playing the uh, the Trickster a little bit recently, and uh, turns out when you don't have to worry about being able to sit down and and just record for you know an hour and change, uh, you can get a lot of little twenty minute sessions in. So I leveled the the other character that I was leveling sort of alongside this one. I leveled that much faster, and uh, the the guide for that character or the build summary, or whatever you want to call it, went up last night. Um, it's actually really strong. I'm curious to see how this one will stack up against it at max level. I have a feeling this is going to be a decent amount 
uh, safer, just because of huge amounts of regen. But um, the the cold dual wielding trickster still using primal strike was way better than I thought it would be. Four minute shattered realm eighty runs is pretty good. And realistically, there's not much reason to go higher than sort of 75 to 80 if you're just looking to farm gear. Um, those are kind of the levels at which you can um, you can clear them fast enough for it to still be worth doing. Um, and the loot doesn't get hugely better after that point. It, I believe it does actually get better, but uh, not massively better. I'm going to go get that dynamite. I don't normally do this, but... Why not? Looks like my totem is going to be on the next floor as well, so I have that to look forward to. Now, law note. Don't see those very often anymore. I tend to get most of them on normal. There's your dynamite anyway. Um, if you're interested in a free dynamite that you have to spend forever to get, <laughs> then it's right there. If you want to be, uh, air quotes here, efficient, with your dynamite farming, then you actually don't want to farm dynamite, you want to farm aether crystals in the warden's laboratory. Then go to homestead and use the blacksmith there to just buy dynamite. Um, you turn aether crystals into aether shards at a 3 to 1 ratio, and then one aether shard will get you three dynamite, I think is how it works. So one aether shard is, is one dynamite, for all intents and purposes. Pack of deadly means. The pack of turning it into iron bits is what it should be called. Alright, there's my totem, so let's go do that. Get some whirly boys going. These things are uh, really good at proccing devotions, and then they also shred resistances really well as, as well. I think the, uh, the only thing about them that sucks, and, and it really sucks, is the fact that you have to resummon them. You know, every four seconds or however often it is. Technically, you only need one of them to apply the resistance shred. Like, having three of them does not give you triple the resistance shred. Um, but if you're using them for devotion procs, you want to have three of them. Especially if it's a damage proc. You can actually get some pretty decent damage out of them. So, Superior of Alacrity. 100% um, extra damage, a bunch of extra flat damage. 26% casting speed, or attacking speed, and uh, they were hitting me with that, so that's kind of what I mean about that. I think I've mentioned them before in this series, so I won't belabor the point, but um, humanoid monsters and those ones in particular can be a little scary. Alright, more hidden loot over here, uh, just behind this wall here. And uh, there's this, a second little section here. If you notice with the roof, when you come in here, you might not... Well, I guess you're going to see it anyway, but... There's a little bit of roof that disappears when you go in deeper. Okay, let's go and check for those resistance potions in Homestead. Thought I saw a blue item drop there at the bottom of the screen. Turns out I didn't. So not only am I going uh, senile, I'm going blind as well. <laughs> That's fun. Alright, Obsidian Shaleborn. No big deal. I'm just going to clear this area for no particular reason. I could just walk straight through here, but for some reason I've decided I want the XP this time. Take this last group out, and then we're going to take a quick stop in Homestead. And I'll be honest, this is probably not needed. Um, but better safe than restarting, I guess is the motto. Let's check this last tab here. Um, I'm going to buy that. Aether resistance is good. The poison one, eh, probably not bad, but not really what I'm after. Just trying not to sell anything useful here. I say as I dump a whole bunch of actually good purples that just don't happen to fit for this build. Okay, now I'm hoping I've got uh, Vitality and Chaos Res potions already. Uh, looks like I do indeed have Chaos and Vitality. Lovely. Alright, awesome. So, uh, let's just neck those. And we'll head in and it should honestly be a bit of a stomp for Kuroz. 
Um, we will kill his crystals pretty much by accident, same as we did with Zarya. And the crystals are kind of the main threat from him. Damage is, is kind of high enough that we may not even actually see the crystals, but... Wait and see, I guess. Um, Karoz himself is almost no threat. It's, uh... It's this big boy. Is the actual threat here. So Thal Nosh, the Unraveler. Yeah, I think we're going to kill him before he gets his crystals out. We might see the tentacles. Nope. Nope, he's just dead. Uh, you will be standing in goop when you kill him, so make sure you move when he dies. Otherwise, it's quite likely that um, you take a lot of damage from that. Gee, it's a shame we're not playing Force Wave, isn't it? <laughs> I've actually got a lot of really good drops for a Force Wave character on this one, and I had to uh, I had to farm 20, 22 times for the Megara's Grove Amulet for the actual soldier. It's always the way though. Okay, Aether Blaze is did. Get some loot here. Now this little section, I normally will cut this out because honestly there's not a huge amount that goes on for, I mean, from this rift here all the way up to about the, uh, the Astakhan Valley rift. There's not a huge amount of stuff happening, um, and you can skip almost all of it. There are a couple of things I'll point out along the way, and now that I'm thinking about it, can I even say that I'd usually cut this out anymore? Did that fall down underneath the world? Rude. I can see it. Okay. I'm not complaining, I'm taking it. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. But I am taking that. Yeah, I haven't actually cut this section out for quite a while. Um, so maybe I shouldn't say that I usually cut it out anymore because uh, turns out I don't. Anywho, the, the only thing that's really noteworthy on the way is the, the trip south notes, which I mentioned in normal, so I'll save you the uh, repetition there. There's that, and then there is um, the frozen... this guy. Where is he? Childred. There he is. So Childred here is the only real stop that I make along the way. There we go. Mostly I'm here for the crystals, um, but since he's here every time, and the crystals are there every time, um, I mean, it'd be rude not to, wouldn't it? I do see that totem there, so let's go do that totem. Um, who are you? Corpusia, the reflective. Alright, sure. Ascended Epaulet's Thunderstruck is pretty good. Aether converted to Elemental is also really good. Um, and plus three to Primal Strike. Okay. So, these are included in a lot of uh, Primal Strike builds for obvious reasons. Um, but I was thinking they were more of a Druid... I guess they are Druid or Ritualist. Um, but plus three to Primal Strike is still pretty good. Um, I've got um, not maxed out Primal Strike, so I will try to use those actually. And the resistances on them also looked quite good. Okay, we got the Wendigo spawn, which is going to be high incoming damage. Let's turn the loot off so I can see what's going on. We'll target the Wendigos, uh, I was going to say first, but, you know, turns out it wasn't so much first. Uh, Venom Blade sets is uh, really good. I've got a, a Dervish that uses that set, which is basically a, uh, a glass cannon. With heavy emphasis on cannon, uh, it does a lot of damage, but... Um, yeah, it's, it's quite squishy. Alright, I think we've made it. Made it halfway, that is. Um, do I want to... Yeah, you know what? I'm going to go and get... Where is it? We're going to go for a little bit of run. 
So this uh, rift gate that we were just at, the Astakhan, is that the valley one? Astakhan Road. Once you get to there, uh, you have the ability, we'll say, to do the uh, the hidden path quest. So I'm going to go do that. Now I've already got the runestone of Drig, so this second one should open for me. Even though I believe I picked that one up in, in normal, but I'm pretty sure this should get me into the um, the Saleil section here. And then from there I can just do the Bismil one, which we just kind of... Uh, I'll call it unlocked, even though it's not unlocked, it's more like, you know, happen to get up to it. So, go and do that. Maybe we'll get some nice pants, who knows. The, uh, the Dreek pants is probably better for this build, but uh, if we get a decent Salail drop... Oh no. <laughs> okay. Alright, we'll do it properly. Which I guess means I don't need that. Um, gloves can go, all this can go. I should check those gloves, actually. Nope. Boots. Also, nope. I'm a little bit salty about that, <laughs> not gonna lie. Um, that's a lot of Chaos Res. But no. Yeah, a little bit salty about how easily this character has got gear for a Force Wave build, and how easily my Force Wave build didn't get any. <laughs> um... I can't remember how long I had to farm for the uh, Mythical Stone Fist Rebuke on the actual character that wanted it. I get them as drops fairly regularly, so I can't remember, but I don't think it took too, too long, but I'm pretty sure it was level 100 before I got it. Okay. Palacrix. Get those whirly boys out. I'm definitely noticing the damage is not so amazing without the shredding now. Um, whereas before you could kind of just hold left click and walk through hordes of whatever and it didn't matter. Um, definitely at the point now where you kind of need to have the thermite mine and the wind devils out. Okay, Razorback's dead. Where's the uh, the green goop on the floor? There it is. Okay, I'm just gonna leave that. You um after 1.2 or patch 1.2, you definitely get a lot more iron bits just dropping as iron bits, so you're less reliant on picking up trash to sell, but still not completely um not worth it. Alright, Guardian of Drig, down he goes, just grab all this. Mighty of the Wild is not great, of the Wild is a pet thing. Taskmasters also pets, so not great drops here. Now if I run back, it should be faster than doing that uh, Broken Hills run again, so I should be able to just run back here to Devil's Crossing. And then from there, go back to my rift gate just outside the Drig section. And this stone should open the door. That's the plan, anyway. We'll see how it goes. Unfortunately, long, boring walk home. I was also going to change some of the devotion findings as well, or at least check them. Let me do that. Hang on. So I wanted... Um, rumor is unbound. Why is that not bound? What's Primal Strike on? Yeah, so that is on Thermite Mine. That's fine. Um, I actually want that on the Wind Devils. Then Altos can go on the Thermite Mine. Uh, I don't know what Primal Strike is being used for, but I want it back there. Oh no, I don't. Primal Strike is on that. Okay, yeah, that's fine. 
Right, so actually I want Wind Devils on this one. Is it already on there? I am still completely playing a different build. Um, Wind Devils on... Yeah, okay, okay. Right. That is fixed. So, Rumor, or Murmur, is for the cold build that I've just spent a day and a half throwing together. Okay. Everything's under control. We don't mess with it. Alright, now the door opens. Good, good, good. And we can go in and get a new pair of pants, maybe. These guys are following me, so I'm just going to clear these out. Probably didn't need to, need to, but, um, yeah, why not? So the Guardian of Soleil here. So under my feet is a whole bunch of purple goop. Uh, that's going to continue to burn after I kill him, so we'll just move out of that. Uh, Stonehide is not great, although look at those resistances. Um, and increased armor as well. Stonehide of anything that wasn't corrosion would have been much more useful. Oh well, didn't get it, so moving on. Alright, we'll go kill the uh, the Bismil thing. Um, we may as well do the temple as well, why not? Temple should be worth uh, three skill points, I think. Uh, I guess we'll find out. I, I'm pretty sure I didn't do it in normal. I only had one stone, so that would suggest that I did not. But we shall see. I'm, like I said, I'm pretty sure I didn't do that in normal, so we're going to get three um, three attribute points from from Bismil here. And then when we do the temple, we should get three skill points. So there's one for each difficulty, and if you just do the ultimate one, then you will get the rewards from the previous ones as well, which, uh, honestly, I'm not sure I like the change, but... It is what it is, I'm not in charge, so we play the game as it is, not how we want it. Also, I'm probably a handful, or one of a handful of people who actually like the fact that you had to do the campaign three times to get those rewards. Alright. I'm not feeling particularly brave, so I'm not going in here, but uh, just here is a rock, and this door opens up. I'll go in and I'll show you, but I'm not going to fight her. Not because I don't think the build could, could do it, but just don't want to risk it. So there's Rashalga, the Mad Queen. Um, she is not a Celestial, uh, but, you know, some people might think that uh, she probably should be. It's a very, very scary bug. So I'm just going to not take the risk. I'm going to kill the Guardian of Bismil and be on my way. Down he goes. Um, Devil Tongue, that would have been good on another build as well. <laughs> um, preserving of incantations on a pet pair of legs is kind of meh. So that's my three attribute points. They're going straight into yeah, physique. Although, the fact that my chance to hit is only 83% is a little bit concerning. Um, and that didn't help at all, so... We're going to keep it in Physique, and I'm going to start looking for some gear with offensive ability. So, actually these ones are not bad. The Of Readiness is OA and DA. Um, I think it's of Attack for just offensive ability. Also, I think I can get a new belt. Um, who is this from? Solar. Solar is going to be Homestead. Let me just check blueprints. There may be a level 70 blueprint, or a level 70 belt. Now that I'm thinking of this, I think I've already got it. Let's just see. So, Solar Waste Guard is level 50. I think there's a level 70 version. Get a quest to turn in anyway, so. Thank you for the level. And we're putting all of those points into Storm Surge, which, like I said, I really should have had those points in there already. Uh, right, Quartermaster. 
Solar girdle. There we go. Level seventy. I'll take it. And you can uh, you can have all this this stuff. Let's do a little bit of crafting here. Um, if no, if for no other reason, then the level seventy will have better armor. Um, so if we just do solar waste guard here, what do we need? Vicious spikes. Of course. This is not the sound of me googling where to find that blueprint. I promise I already know. <laughs> um, so it turns out. But I can't spell. <laughs> um, all right, how many of these do we want to make? So, what do they cost me in in uh, scrap? Eight. All right, I'm going to make four of these, and we'll see how we'll see how good they get. So, four of those, and we'll do solar. Look at belts. Okay, first one. What do we got? Of the void, uh, no, that's that's kind of bad. So we already had that. Okay, of the fox is good. Uh, that one, good stats on it. Good stats, no resistances, unfortunately. Um, but that's fine. What about the third one? Mighty is is kind of the same as this, but it's percentage of. Um, Percentage physique instead of flat spirit and cunning. I prefer this one. And then the last one we're going to have is of the arcane blaze. So we get an extra proc. Um, which we can convert to elemental. Not lightning, but elemental. So, yeah. Honestly, I think we go with this one. The of mending is not bad. Um, did I make the wrong thing? Why is that saying solar waste guard? Solar waste guard. I made the wrong one, that's why. Okay. <laughs> Let's see, how many of these can I make? Three at the max. I think I'm just gonna make two. And, um, and we're going to pretend that didn't happen. Solar Girdle, level 70. Okay. So, Incorruptible, that's actually really good. And the second one is Thunderstruck, which is also quite good. Okay. Uh, how are we doing for resistances on our current belt? Has none. It's really hard to say no to Incorruptible. Um, especially when Thunderstruck is... Uh, it's Elemental instead of Chaos, Aether, and Poison. We go with that one. Just swap that over. Um, and then, yeah, I'm gonna, like I said, pretend that I didn't just blow a whole bunch of mats crafting things that are no good. So I'm never gonna talk about that again. I'm gonna keep my add-on. There we go. And, um, I guess we can... We can do this quest now, since we are now able to make dynamite. Um, how are we doing for time, actually? Ah, heaps of time, heaps of time. So we can blow these up. No, we can't. I don't have any dynamite. <laughs> Alright, so I guess we go make some dynamite. And then we might go do the temple. Um, and maybe, actually do this quest as well. I don't normally do this quest because it's fairly rippy. I think we'll leave it for now. Um, Birch Village, we'll head into East Marsh, why not? That skill's not ready. I didn't bring enough scrap, did I? Wait, do I even have enough scrap after that little crafting fiasco? I think I should have 11. I think I need 10 though, right? Okay. So this is why you stick to the plan, guys. <laughs> Don't try and impromptu things. Doesn't work. Okay. 10 scrap. Eleven scrap. 
And we'll make some dynamite. So you need to use a legion smith to make your dynamite. Um, and I don't have any crystals, so we're going to go hit up the warden's laboratory as well. Uh, none of the non-legion smiths will actually be able to make dynamite for you, so you have to go to Homestead or Fort Icon. Uh, but it is definitely worth it. So, Aether Shard. You know what? You look like someone who's made out of XP and reputation. So we'll go and bash him a few times. Getting reputation with the outcast, very nice. The fact that Devil's Crossing doesn't care, like they're being attacked, literally attacked by ethereal zombies walking across the bridge, but you can kill all the ethereals in the world and they don't care. It's only Cronley's lads that actually, um, that they care about. Alright, let's set up some thermite mines around here, we'll get a few more whirly boys on the go. Um, and we'll pop this open, why not? This particular totem can be a little rippy sometimes, it depends what spawn you get. Uh, also depends how good your damage is. Um, turns out my damage is okay. If your damage is rubbish, then um, good luck with this totem. You know what, I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna turn Raz off. I'll leave the MIs on, but um, I think there's too many, um, too much rubbish on the screen. Alright, nearly done with these and then we'll be back to uh, the hidden path. Okay, and one more. So, can you tell I've done this a few times? Alright, so Barrett's Village, and we'll go blow that bridge up and then repair it. Um, I'm not going to go do a Celestial Totem, even though there is one in that area. Um, because suicide by totem is not something that I plan on doing with this character. It, it may happen anyway, but um, not something I'm going to do deliberately. So if you do want to um, go see the, uh, the totems, you can follow this road and go across this bridge. Actually, you know what? I'll go uncover it. Why not? You can explore the area. I'm not clicking on the totem. It's also, uh, is it Father Abadath or something like that? There's a church over here, and in the back of the church is a very, very scary Chthonian. Who I recommend avoiding, but, you know, you do you. He has definitely killed a few of my hardcore characters, so just here in this building is a humanoid boss at the end. And uh, he is completely optional, and so I'm going to opt out. Looks like this particular spawn is not where we are going to find our totem, but it's it's kind of in here somewhere. It's along this top edge. So Celestial Totem, and I'm not kidding when I said it's suicide. Um, they are by far the hardest totems in the game. So if you want to try them, feel free, but... Be prepared to run back. Also, let me know if you died, because I could use a good chuckle. Alright, so we are here for the hidden path. I'm going to head down south, actually. I'm going to go through the, the camp down there as well. Just to reveal the other two places that uh, Celestial Totem could be. Again, I'm not clicking on it. It's basically suicide at this point, but if you want to, you go right ahead. There it is there, Celestial Totem. There's two spawn points for it in here. The first one is obviously this one where it is, and the second one is sort of towards the north of this little island thing. So that's what they look like, and that can stay there without being clicked on. The second spawn location is just in here, um, sort of here-ish, along this back wall. So I'm just going to uncover that. We've also got Gale Slice here. You can kill Gale Slice if you want. Uh, he could potentially drop the Mistborn Talisman blueprint if you didn't get it from Baldrak. 
so he can be fun to kill. Uh, where is his healer? Someone's healing him. Maybe I'm just not doing any damage. It could be that too. Uh, I think someone was healing him. He's definitely going down faster. There he goes, and... Nope. I got a blueprint, but it wasn't the one I was expecting. Watcher's Crest, not horrible, not amazing. Decent. So, just here, or over there. Um, and like I said, I'm not clicking on that. I'm not even going to click on it to, to show what the monsters look like. They are... Um, very, very dangerous. So they can stay there all by themselves, trapped in their little totem crystal thing. And not bothering me. Right. Let's go ahead and do the temple here. Where are we up to? So what I'm looking for is the door. Should be about where I am. Uh, nope, we're going up. So see how this, the edge of the map here is sloped upwards? It forms like a little V here. There's my door. So that V is where you want to be heading. And then we walk in here, and right at the end is the temple. You can fight all this, you can skip all this. Um, this guy is made out of experience, so I want to kill him. But as you can see, I am absolutely getting hammered by these things. And my poison acid resist is capped, so they are going to hurt. That's okay, we're actually only here for one thing, and none of these extremely painful little monsters are the one thing that I'm here for. Very tempting to kill that doggo though. Let's head inside. So at the end here is, um, I want to say it's the Overseer, but um, there's one there's one guy at the end behind the, this is a boss door door. Eldritch Totem, I'm going to skip that as well. Those can be a little rippy sometimes. But we're basically just here for the guy at the end. Don't need to kill anything on the way. There is a Devotion Shrine. There is, as we just saw, a Totem as well. Um, you can do them if you wish. Uh, I do not wish. Let's see if we can't just dodge around all this stuff. It is going to chase you um, if you decide not to kill it, but that's fine. As long as they never actually fully catch up. Did I just get webbed? Is that what's going on? Yeah, I did. Okay, so run, 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 run. And into the boss room door. Okay. So here is... That's the Sentinel, not the Overseer. This is the guy we're here to kill. Um, he's basically the guardian of three skill points. So I'm going to get the Whirly Boys out and let's go kill him. Now I should, in theory, be able to just blow him up. In theory. Those meteor showers are... ...getting a little uncomfortably close. I think I may back off... Uh, he's almost dead. I probably should back off because of the, uh, the crystal just there. Both of them. There he goes. I can't remember what those crystals do. I almost always run away from them. I think I have uh, Zarya crystals kind of permanently burned into my brain. Um, Alright, so I'm ready to receive my gift. And that is three skill points. Which are going straight into Storm Surge. So more damage. More damage, more better. Um, two more levels, that'll be capped out. And then we can go back to filling out things that we missed. Right, that is the end of the Hidden Path. Um, we've got a turn in to do at Devil's Crossing as well. Go talk to Barnabas. I'm pretty sure now I can talk to him and he'll give me XP. If not, we'll have to go to 
homestead, but I think we're good. What else we got? Um, Captain Soma, why not? Go talk to Captain Soma. And then she can send us to Fort Icon. Why do you have less? I'm already in okay, Ring of Vile Intent. That is going to get turned into bits. Okay, and Creed will send us north. There we go. Speak to Inquisitor Creed at Fort Icon. Uh, but that's going to be for the next episode, so thank you all very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one, and goodbye for now.